safe mode, engage. <laughs> hey everyone, thanks for joining me. And in today's video, I wanna go over what exactly safe mode is for the PlayStation 4, and also walk you through um, some things along the way as to how it can help your PlayStation 4 if you're running into any issues and how it can help those issues as well. As always, if you guys enjoy this video and you find something helpful in it, be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe so that you can always stay up to date on my latest videos just like these. Let's get right into it. Now, before I get into safe mode for the PlayStation 4, I wanna talk first about what exactly safe mode is because I think to a lot of people, safe mode can sound like a scary thing, almost like a limp mode home for a car or a boat. And if you, if you have a fundamental understanding of exactly what safe mode is, it's really something that can benefit you more than hurt you, as long as you're doing it the right way. So first, what is safe mode? Safe mode is a proprietary menu separate from this home screen menu like we're on right now. And what that does is it's built into the console, it's made from scratch, and what it does is it helps you with issues that you may have, such as if your PlayStation 4 is not starting up correctly, if it's freezing, you know, midway through the menu, if there's a resolution that's not showing up correctly, if at all, along with some other issues as well. But those are usually the main issues that merit a safe mode needing to be engaged so that you can get through that hurdle. Now let's get right into how to get into safe mode. So what you wanna do is, you can have your PlayStation 4 off or on. And I first wanna to mention too along the way, so I'm running currently a PlayStation 4 Pro, but this, this will also work with the PlayStation 4 Pro, Slim, and original models. So regardless of which model you have, this should work as well. To get into safe mode, what you wanna do is you can have your system off or on. And what you wanna do is you wanna to go to your power button directly on your console, and you wanna push and hold it until it beeps so that the console will shut off. Keep holding. Okay, so when it beeps the second time, it'll prompt that it's turning off. What you wanna do is you wanna wait until the system fully shuts off so that everything is powered off, there's no more power running to it. And then what you wanna do, so you wanna wait until the light fully comes off in the light bar. Once you see that the light bar is fully off, and that you also don't hear anything running inside the system itself, then what you wanna do is you wanna, you wanna go back to that same power button and you wanna push and hold it. You wanna keep holding it. You wanna keep holding it. And you wanna keep holding it until you hear that second beep. Once you hear that second beep, you wanna let go. And then now, instead of going into that home menu screen of the PlayStation 4, you're now in what's called safe mode. There is a certain accessory that you need in order to go through safe mode, the safe mode menu, and that is your wired cable that maybe came with your PlayStation 4 controller, or if you can't find that one, a compatible micro USB to USB-A cable. And what you wanna do is you actually wanna hardwire connect it to your uh, PlayStation 4 controller because for some reason, the Bluetooth connectivity doesn't necessarily work, which is the wireless connection that your PlayStation 4 controller and your system use until you get past that initial menu to reset up your system again. So once you plug in your controller into the PlayStation 4, you wanna hold that PlayStation button to power it back on, and then safe mode starts up. Safe mode has a lot of different options in it, and this can seem really daunting at first, and even when I saw it at first, I was kinda of like, whoa, holy crap, this is crazy. But once you just kinda of look at each one and understand what each menu item does, it can really help you more than anything to get through the issue that you come across, if, if any, that your PlayStation 4 might be going through. The first setting is restarting your PlayStation 4. This is really cool, because what that simply does is it just cancels you out of safe mode and then returns you to your PlayStation 4 right to that home screen menu without any changes, without any deleting any information at all. If you think you're stuck in safe mode, don't worry, you're not. Just make sure you plug in your controller, keep it plugged into the PlayStation 4, power it on, and then simply push the X button to restart your PlayStation 4. The second menu item is if your PlayStation 4, you set it at a certain resolution, 
or by default it was set at a certain resolution and your TV might not support that or your gaming monitor. Some problem that could arise with that is if you just see a black screen and you, you might hear audio, maybe through your sound bar, your headphones, uh, but you don't see a resolution coming through the picture. In that case, changing the resolution uh, through menu item two on safe mode will actually restart your system on 480p resolution. What that does is it retrogrades it back to the lowest resolution that is supported by almost any TV that supports HD signal. What you can do is you can go back into your home menu, go back into the sound and screen settings, and then change your resolution to the highest supported HD signal that your TV handles. The third menu item is it's another way to update your system software, but you can also do that through your home menu if you can access that as well. Restoring your default settings may sound scary, but it really doesn't delete all of your data on your system. More so like down here, I'm gonna say in a minute, you know, where seven and eight do. Um, restoring your default settings, just anything like your sound and screen, your audio, you know, things that you've set up yourself, it will dial it back to the default settings so that if, you know, something happened and you feel like it's, it's freezing up your system or it's not running, running right because of that, then you might want to restore your default setting and then whatever you changed, or maybe it's an internet setting that you changed, it'll dial it back to the default. You can reconnect to your Wi-Fi, and everything should be good then. This is an important one, rebuilding your database. When you rebuild your database, what that does is if you notice your system freezing or it says something like your hard drive is corrupt or it just simply won't start up uh, maybe after you updated the system software, what you want to do is you want to rebuild that database and it won't necessarily delete any of your information but it might dial back um, any downloaded games that you have or game saves. So if you do this, what you'll have to do is you'll go back and I'll leave a link in the description below for an upcoming video I'm gonna do about rebuilding your database. And as soon as I publish that, I'll link it down there in the description so you can check this video out in more detail. On the surface, rebuilding your database is just resetting your online account. So what it'll do is it'll, it'll log you out and delete some of that information but it's, it should still be mostly there um, when you re-sign on to the PlayStation Network. So the next two are very, this is a last resort fix for the PlayStation 4 and something that you, you shouldn't necessarily do until you're considering like taking it in for service or trying to crack this thing open and repair it yourself. What initializing the PlayStation 4 does is it'll delete all of the information on the PlayStation 4 except the bare bones system software that the system came with. So if you installed the latest updated software on it for the home screen menu and the, the foundational software for it, initializing the PS4 will delete everything except the software itself. So all your settings, all your online saves, all your games, game saves, things like that. It will dial it all the way back, delete them all, and then it'll start fresh. This is also another nice thing because if you tried to rebuild your database and the rebuilding of the database didn't quite catch um, any of the corrupt data that your PlayStation 4 came across, which may have led to your freezing or your faulty startup. Initializing the PS4 deletes it all, no matter what, you know, good data and the corrupt bad data, dials it back, deletes it all, and then you start fresh with that foundational software in the beginning. If that still doesn't work, the very, very last resort thing is to initialize your PlayStation 4 with and to delete the foundational software that came with it. This is the last resort, and I say this like so many times because you're gonna have to download that software from your computer onto a, a USB jump drive, download the foundational software for the PlayStation, and then once you hit number seven, you push the X on that, it'll delete the entire system, including the software that came with it for the home screen and all that. Once that's, it's completely wiped, you're gonna have to reintroduce um, the operating system of the PlayStation 4 back into it through the information that was downloaded on that USB jump drive. So that is an absolute last resort, but it is an option if you are considering taking it in for service and you tried everything else 
up until that point, it just still doesn't work right. Once again, if you think you're stuck in safe mode, simply go up to the restart PlayStation 4 and you should be okay. And that's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it and you found it helpful, please be sure to hit that like button and please don't forget to subscribe because I make so many more videos that are very similar to this, just helpful videos on the PlayStation 4 and that you'll always stay up to date on the latest ones. I'll see you guys in the next one.